So David over at the Page Builder Framework reached out to me recently and asked me to take a look at version 2, the latest version of his theme for WordPress. So in this video, we're going to take a look at both the free new features and also the features that have been added to the Pro Pack that's available to expand what you can do with the core theme. So this is a sponsored video by David over at the Page Builder Framework. He's kindly asked me to take a look at the version 2 and bring some of the key new things to you so you can see if this is the kind of theme that you'd find useful in your projects moving forward. My name is Paul C and welcome to WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at some of the key new features that have been added to the free theme. Once we've covered those, we're going to jump over, install the Pro Pack that gives us a range of extra features, and we're going to take a look at some of the key things that have been added there as well. By the end of the video, you should have a good idea of where this is the kind the theme that you think is going to be useful for you moving forward using whatever page builder you prefer. So I've gone ahead and hopped over into the dashboard of WordPress and I'm already in the customizer and this is where a lot of what you can do with the page builder framework and the new settings and controls we have will all take place. So we're going to start off with none of the premium add-ons added in there. So you can see at the moment it tells me premium add-on features available and I can get those. I've only got the plain vanilla free version of the theme installed. We'll take a look at the premium add-ons a little later. Let's concentrate on those free things first of all so you can see exactly what you get if you're only using the free version. So let's kick things off by taking a look at some of the basic things that have been added to the blog layers. Now there's nothing sort of groundbreaking here but what it does give you is more control over how things look which is always a good thing. So if we jump into the blog options inside the customizer and we come down to the blog archive layout section we've always had things like to allow us to go and choose the different layouts. Currently we have two we've got the default which is what you can see at the moment or the image beside post option and as you can see that shows us the alternative layout. We've got some other options now which allow us to go through and style things which we didn't have before. So now we can do things like adjust the styling so we can see we've got plain or we can jump in and choose boxed. When we choose boxed we open up some additional options and one of those things is the ability now to go through and add padding in there but also to deal with those on a responsive basis. So we can add padding into the top right bottom and left for desktop different for mobiles and tablets so we have great control now to make sure that this looks exactly how we want it to. We can do things like adjust the spacing between the various different elements. You can see that immediately shows the changes. We can also do things like adjust the content alignment. So you can see that now centers everything. If we change that back to plain, which is so this is the original style and go back to default. You can see now we get centralized content, which all looks pretty cool. We can adjust things like the accent color, which is the color of the things like the link for the title, the link for the actual author and so on. Or we can do things like we can adjust the hover for that. We can also do things like adjust the title font size and the overall font size. So you can see we can easily just use these sliders and adjust things on there on the fly. So you can see we can easily change to whatever we want. Same goes for the font size. You can see that now updates pretty much in real time. Now, while there's nothing really groundbreaking there, it's still nice to have those options available to us. If we come back out and we go and take a look at things like the post layout, you can see we can enable and disable various different things. So things like the sidebar, we can enable and disable the featured image and so on. Same goes for the blog post and archive layout. So you can see if we wanted to hide the featured image, we can click on that. Now we only get the text, the titles and all the meta information and so on. So it's nice to see you can do that. We can also do that on a post by post basis. So let's put the featured image back on here. Let's come out and take a look at the post layer and you can see featured image is set to be displayed on this. So if we click and go into this particular blog post, you can see currently there's no image being displayed on this particular post. However, if we come back and we choose a different post and go in, you'll see that the actual post featured image is being displayed and that's because we now have the ability on a post by post basis to be able to change those settings. So if I switch over to my blog post. You can see I'm just editing a normal blog post in here and if we scroll down you can see the featured image is set and it's the image that's not displayed in the actual post itself. That's because we now have the ability to disable various different elements on the actual post page itself. And this is individual, it's not a global change, this is just for this specific page. You can set global values like we saw in the customizer and so on, but it's great to see that you can actually also control things like this. So you may not always want to have that image at the top you can now control it. So you can see we can do things like we can hide or show the featured image, the page title, the header and footer and so on. Let's just enable all of these. We'll hit update and once we've done that we'll preview our page. 
you'll see now that we now have no header, no footer, no featured image, and no title. So it's incredibly easy to go in and control those on a page-by-page -page basis. So if you were doing something like creating a landing page, for example, you could use the post feature, disable these various different things, and then you've got a very, very simple page that you can use in any way that you want. So it's pretty cool to see we have this nice level of granular control over various different key elements on our posts and pages. So pretty cool to see that. Now, we're currently looking at the free version of the Page Builder Framework. If you add in the premium add-on, we get a whole range more control. So currently, we can do things like control the blog layout and the post layout and so on. But with the premium add-on, we have access to things like 404 pages, search result pages, and so on. I'll come back to that a little later when we activate the premium add-on, and I'll show you how they work and how we have those additional features, which, like I say, is one of those things that if you want more control over the way your site looks, this is a great way to get access to those facilities. So another key area that a lot of time has been spent on with the Page Builder Framework is that of accessibility. It's now screen reader and keyboard compliance, so we have a lot more control for those people that need to rely upon these types of devices. We can check that out quite easily if we just jump into the console for Chrome, and you can see we're on the Audits tab. Now I've set this up just to check accessibility, nothing else. And if we run this now, we'll find that'll go through, check all the different aspects it needs to check that compatibility with the accessible side of things. And once it's done that, it'll give us a rating. As you can see, it goes through and it's given us a 100% rating. So it means that we've got great accessibility to make sure that the site, no matter what you develop using the Page Builder Framework, should be as accessible as possible to people that use screen readers, keyboard shortcuts, and various other things on any type of device they may be using. So this is great to see that we've got that accessibility built in to the core theme that we have, even if if you're using the free version. So it's great to see that kind of option being added in. So the next thing I want to take you through and show you is some of the new options we have for the logo on our website. So if we come over to the header section and jump into logo, you can see we now have three different options for the size of the logo we want to work with based upon the device that we're currently viewing it on. So at the moment we're sort of changing a global setting so we can come in and we can change this to whatever we want. So you can see once I change that the logo will update itself. So we can set this to whatever we think is relevant for the size of the header we want to work with. But then I can jump over to my tablet and I can adjust it on there to make it a different size so it's not so large. Let's just go for something like that. And we can do exactly the same then for anyone using a mobile device. So again, we can adjust this and make it to any size that we want to make sure it's all in keeping. Now we're not limited to just that. Now, even if you're not using a logo, you still have more control. So let's just go back to our desktop. Let's remove the logo. So you can see now we have no logo, which has been replaced with just simple plain text. That opens up a range of other options to us. We can now adjust the color on there, so we can set whatever color we want to be the normal color and the hover color. So you can see we can control that. So let's just say we'll have green for the hover. Give it a second, and you can see that now updates it. So we've got control over those aspects. Just clear that. We also have the ability to go through and choose different sizes based upon the device that you're using again. So if we go to tablet, for example, we could say, well, we might want to have a 14 pixel text on there. And if we went to mobile device, we might say we want to have a 12 pixel size on there. So we now have control over doing those things. We can also go in and add in the tagline and get some more controls there. So once we do that and we say display the tagline, we can now go through and choose what color that tagline is going to be and also whether it displays the tagline on the mobile or not. And again, we have the ability to go in and choose the font sizes for just the tagline. So it's great to have some more responsive options available, whether you use a logo or you just simply want to use text for your logo. We now have a lot more control over how they are styled and how they work based upon both the devices you're using and how you interact with them. So that pretty much ticks off all the new things that I wanted to show you inside the free version of the Page Builder Framework. If you're interested in finding out all of the changes, I'd recommend taking out the change log. It'll show you all the different things you've been added, updated, and any bug fixes that may apply. Next up, we're going to move on to take a look at the new features that have been added into the premium add-on. So I'm going to install that, get that set up, and then we're going to take a look at some of the key things that I think are really interesting in this latest update. So I've activated the premium add-on. First thing I want to show before we jump into the customizer is some of the new options we have inside the actual theme settings itself. We come over to the appearance section. You can see we've got theme settings. We're going to click to go into there. And we've got two tabs. The license, which obviously is where you can put your license code in to activate this particular plugin. But what I'm interested in is the global settings, the blog layouts, and so on. You can see we've got full width. These are global settings now for the various different things for posts and pages. So we can set them to full width for both the post and or the page. We can remove the title globally, or we can set a transparent header globally. 
We can also jump into advanced and you can see we have a range of other key pages that are part of a typical WordPress site that you can also go in and apply these to. So if you wanted to, you can apply transparent headers to things like your blog pages, your search results, all archive, post archives, and so on. Same thing goes for the blog layouts. You can see we've got settings to show the blog page and the search results, but if we expand that out, we also have categories, tags, and so on. So it's great to see these extra features being added in. We also have performance setting options. So you can do, see we can do things like remove feed links. We can remove things that we don't have any need for that are both great for security, but also help in speeding up the way that your site actually works, loads and responds to the end user. So I'm not going to cover what they are in this particular video, but you can see that we've got options there for them. We also have the ability to go in and do things like apply responsive breakpoints. So we can control exactly where the layout changes between desktops, tablets and mobiles. So again, a really nice addition that we can go in and we can fine tune that to get exactly what we want. We also have the option to white label the entire back end of this theme. So you can see we can replace anything with our company name, company URL and so on. So this is really good to see that we can change all these different things. We'll take a little look and come back to those maybe a bit later on. But for now, let's just say that it's good to see them there. We we'll leave everything as is for this point in time. But let's just take a look now and jump over into the posts and pages. OK, so we're going to come over, jump into the pages this time as opposed to the posts. Pretty much the same settings are available in there. But let's just say we come into our home page and we say we're going to edit this. So we're going to come in. Once we do that, we're going to revisit now the template settings on the right hand side. Now, these have been expanded and they work in conjunction and alongside those settings that I've just showed you. Now, those global settings will affect every single page or post or any kind of template that you set up and apply it to. However, by using these options, we can override them on each individual page or post where we wanted to. So you can see we can do, we can inherit the global settings or we can override it and say we want this page or post to be contained, full width. We can hide and disable things like the page title, featured image and so on. Same goes things then for the sidebar and also for the transparent header. So we can easily come in, set global settings and then we can override those on the individual pages that we want. This is a great way of being able to set a global setting for a non-transparent header throughout the entire site but then your home page like I've got in this example has a full sort of size image on there and you want that transparent heading because it's in keeping with the design well this is how easy it is to go and do that simple check of a box update your design and then get everything laid out the way you want so it's great to see these granular controls are being applied into the theme builder framework now, before we jump back into the customizer, there's one thing I want to do. Now, if you remember back earlier on in the video, I said that we can control things like the archive pages, the blog layout pages, but when you have the premium add-on, it opens up the ability to style and control the layouts of things like your 404 pages, your search result pages, and so on. To do that, we need to activate those features. So let's come back into our appearance tab and back into the theme settings that we took a look at a moment ago. You can see under the blog layouts, as we saw, we've got blog page, search results, and so on. If we click to expand that out and we've got those additional options in there, let's just go through and just check all of those. All we're going to do is just check those, come down to the bottom, hit save changes. Then we're going to jump over to the customizer. And once that loads up, we can see we have access now to a lot more control over the different page layouts. So if we go back into blog, you can see where we only had general blog archive and layout and we had blog layout. That's all we had. We now have a range of new options that allow us to control and fine tune the layouts for each of these individual page types. So, for example, if we take a look at the category layout, expand that out, you can see we've got the option now to go into things like hide and move around the things like your titles, your metadata, your featured image, your footer information and so on. So we can control and style the various different aspects inside each of those different layouts. So the premium add on opens up a range of new things that we can style and control, which is great to see because it gives us much more granular control over how each of the different page layouts operates inside the design that we want to work with. However, it doesn't stop there. If you've got WooCommerce installed, you'll have additional controls to control the way that the WooCommerce pages look and also things like easy digital downloads. So if you are using any of those plugins, you'll get additional options inside the customizer just by using those checkboxes inside the theme settings and you'll be able to control the way that those pages look and operate. 
So this now opens up a range of possibilities to make sure that when we use these various plugins that we can make sure that they look and feel the same as the rest of the site and don't stand out. So I love seeing the fact that these integrations are being built into the actual core theme itself just by using the premium add-on pack. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is something that we've had for a while, but now it's been expanded to give us more control. We've been able to create sticky headers without any real problem with the Pro add-on since it's been released pretty much. So let's take a look at that. Let's just come into the header section. And you can see we've got a ton of options in here now that have been opened up by having the Pro add-on pack. But what we're interested in to start off with is the sticky navigation option. As you can see, it's now checked, and if we scroll down, you can see our sticky navigation pops over, and we can go through and style that and do all the kinds of good things that we're kind of used to. But we now have the option that if we're using the pre-header and click to activate that, so we just say we want two columns in this example, we can now also make that sticky. So at the moment, it's disabled. We've just got the pre-header there, and if we scroll up, you can see that it doesn't display. It only shows our normal sort of sticky navigation. If we enable this, and let it refresh, you'll see now it gives us both the sticky navigation and also the sticky pre-header. So if you are using this and you want to make sure that everybody can see things like your phone number or your call to action or those kinds of good things, you can now include those inside your sticky header. So pretty cool. Another thing that's really quite cool. Now speaking of your navigation and so on, what about if you want to do something like make a button up there? So you might have a, a call to action button. Can we do that? Well, you can, and it's very, very easy. So we're going to do it just back out of this. We'll just disable that pre-header. Jump back out and set that completely off. You can see we've got a call to action button. If we click in there, you can say display a call to action button. And it gives us a little bit of information underneath that. The key thing that we want to take away from this is this just little class item that we want there. So we can just copy that and we can use that anywhere now inside our entire site to reference a call to action button. So we can set anything and assign that class to it to make it into a call to action button. So you can see at the moment, we've got our call to action at the top. However, let's just disable that. And let's just come back out of this and we're going to go through to our navigation. So let's hit publish on there to make sure we save and commit any changes. And we'll just jump back out of this. Once we've done that, we're going to go into our menus. And once we're inside our menu, you can see we've got, we'll do the about us. That's fine. And we'll come down to there. Now you can see we can't actually assign anything there at the moment. What we need to do is come into the screen options and we can just enable CSS classes. Now with that enabled, we've got some additional options. So we expand out our link now. You can see we've got custom classes in there. If I drop in that custom class that we want to assign and hit save menu, if we jump back over and take a look at our page now, scroll back up and refresh this, you can see that our About Us button now becomes a Call to Action button. So we can use this anywhere throughout our site just by using that simple class. And then the settings for that particular layout for our Call to Action are fully controllable inside the customizer itself. So we come back into the customizer, come into the header section, and from there choose our Call to Action button. Even though this is disabled, it doesn't matter because we've assigned this ourselves manually. And now we can go through and we can style anything we want on there. So we've got the Call to Action button. We want to change the color of that. Let's just say we want to put a red background in there. We'll just assign red to be the background color. Let that update. And you can see now any Call to Action button throughout the entire site will now use that particular color. So it's really cool to see how easy it is to just use that simple class and assign that Call to Action button anywhere throughout your entire site. So pretty cool. So there's one final thing I think is worth mentioning about this particular theme, and that is the fact that they've worked very, very hard to reduce the number of database calls when you're using the theme. They've reduced them by over 300, and this means there's going to have a positive speed impact for anyone that's using the Page Builder framework to build their website. Now, anything that's going to speed up the process of actually loading a site is a positive in my opinion. So it's great to see that they've gone to the time and effort to ensure that they can optimize their theme to get the best results out of it. So there we go, that's the Page Builder Framework, a theme for WordPress that doesn't mind what page builder you use, it's going to work with pretty much everything out there on the market. So hopefully what you've seen in this video is that the new features that have been added into it streamlined the process of creating your website, added some really nice simple features, and overall it's just a great theme to base your WordPress website on. Have you used the Page Builder Framework yourself in the past or have you tested out version 2? I'd love to get your feedback on this. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of it, good points and bad points, and I'm sure this will help shape the future of the Page Builder Framework.
Speak in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's perfectly fine. But let me know in the comment section what you did or didn't like about the video. It helps me create better content for you moving forward. And as always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.